Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Maria Naylor in which she shares the story behind One and One, her track together with the late Robert Miles. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. All right, here it is, the story behind One and One, my interview with Maria Naylor. Enjoy. Maria Naylor is a UK-based singer who's releasing music since the early 90s. Besides solo hits such as Naked and Sacred and Angry Skies, Maria did a lot of collaborations with names such as Sasha, Ferry Corsten, Tilt, Kiao and Albert, Bart Klaassen, Res Nitsen, Mark Eklaut and many others. In 1996 she teamed up with the late Robert Miles to work on the track One and One. It became a massive success and the track even peaked at the number one position of the charts in countries such as Belgium, Israel, Scotland, Romania and Robert's home country Italy for example. Besides that One and One was a top 10 hit in several other countries all around the world as well. For this week's vlog I sat down with Maria Naylor while she was in the Netherlands for a recording session. And there I had the chance to ask her about the story behind One and One and more. My first question to Maria was around what age she became interested in music. Oh God, since I was born, <laughs> the day I came out apparently my mum said, I came out singing. Oh good, good. <laughs> so do you remember some of the artists or bands that you did listen to back then? Oh gosh, yeah. Um, my house growing up was filled with Singers like Doris Day, Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, a lot of those kind of swing songs. My mum had a collection of music. Black Explosion was a big album, um, a lot of soul, funky music. And then I just remember being in my teens and hearing disco and then dance music came. So it kind of was a progression yeah. of that disco. Yeah, so I was just fueled with all the disco acts yeah. and then into pop, obviously, as I got into my teenage years. Yeah. So yeah, you said you already started like singing from an early age as well? Yeah, singing. I mean, I was at school in all the competitions, you know. You know, when we were at school, we didn't have X Factor or Pop Idol. We didn't have any of the, we didn't have the internet. So we didn't have, you know, trying to be a singer, trying to say, I'm going to be a singer when I get older. You kind of laughed at a little bit in my town, you know. It was like, no one's a singer where I came from. and But... I had a gift and I think people could hear that and I was really encouraged by my school. Yeah. So I would used to I used to sing for my school and I went on to college to do performing arts. So it kind of was a a, a a kind of continuum from that really. So did you ever get like singing lessons? No. We didn't no. Have, we didn't have singing teachers when I was growing up, you know? I mean there might have been one or two. It wasn't until I got signed with one of my first records in 1990 that the record companies were talking about it and I said, can I have a singing lesson? I've never had one before. Yeah, so oh, wow. no. So did, singing teachers weren't around when I was young, yeah. you know. So do you remember your first release? First? Your first release? Oh God, yeah, yeah. My f well, okay, so I do remember my first release getting signed to a major record company. But previous to that, I must have had about 10 to 12 kind of, um, bootlegs, acetate records that would come mm -hmm. out, you know, so I had a lot of the kind of pirate stations playing my stuff, a lot of things that weren't signed before I actually got signed. Mm. So is that also how you got discovered? Yeah, of course it is. Uh, yeah, good, yeah, good. yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, for this interview we're going to talk about One and One, a track for which you did work together with the late Robert Miles. Um, first things first, how did you get in touch with him? Well, we were on the same record label. Um, I'd already had a song out with Sasha called Be As One. Um, he'd had children, we were in the charts at the same time. I actually didn't like children, first of all. And um, I remember then, then later on saying, oh, you know, we'd like you to do Robert Miles' third single, One and One. And I was like, who's Robert Miles? It's the fella with the song you don't like. It was a really <laughs> funny situation. And I was like, oh, but he's never worked with singers before. He's an instrumentalist, you know. So yeah, so that's how it sort of came yeah. about, through our record company. Our record company put us together. Yeah. Was it Deconstruction? Deconstruction, yeah. Deconstruction. yeah. And it was also... So, Robert Miles had released Children and Fable and released Dreamland. And then, 
Rick Knowles and Billy Steinberg that wrote One and One, um, we chose, the record company chose One and One to break Robert in America, and that's what it was chosen for first. So they stopped Dreamland, pulled it back, and then we recorded One and One, then it got put on to Dreamland, and Dreamland got re released. Mm, smart move. Yeah. So, yeah, do, do you remember meeting Robert for the first time? So, the first time I met Robert was the day we recorded One and One. So, um, a couple of days previous, I'd heard One and One on a demo, and it was a rock version. Oh. So, I immediately said, This is not for me. But everyone said, yes, it is, because we don't want you to do it like this. We want you to do it with Robert, so it's going to be a whole different thing. But I hadn't heard what Robert had done musically. So two days later, I went into the studio, <clears throat> met Robert. There was um, a couple of friends of his who were Italian and the engineer who was English. And then all of Robert Mars's friends left, and then it was just us three. And Robert didn't speak any English. I didn't speak any Italian. So for the next four hours, creating one and one was very much done in sign language and laughter, you know, and it was such fun doing it because it was just so right. Everything fitted together. And I remember at the end of the session thinking, wow, this could go. This is good. Mm -hmm. But the American writers didn't like it. They were, I know. So through the session, the record company had rung and said that the American writers want to hear what you're doing with it. So all three of us sat around the table and we were like, okay, we'll play it to them over the phone. So we put the phone up, we played what we'd done, and the, the American writer said, no, we don't like that. We don't like the girl's voice very much. It's, it's too dreamy, and it's not what we had for you. And Robert just said, well, I'm using this singer, I'm doing it this way, or we're not doing it at all. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and yeah. And yeah, and then it got released. Yeah. yeah so you already mentioned, like, the, the writers. So yeah, when I was doing like research for the, this interview, I found on Wikipedia that it says there that it's like one on one, it's, it's like a cover, uh, and that the original is uh, from a Polish pop singer. I hope I pronounce this correctly, Edita Gorn Gorniak. But your version with Robert came out in 1996, and her version came out in 1997. So what's well, the story? Well, because I think what what had happened, I was then told later on that the version that I heard as the demo was her. She'd done it as a demo version for him. So, and then we'd done it, had the release, and then she put it on an album afterwards. I think that's the way the story yeah. goes. So it's not a cover, because we'd done it with the writers, and yeah. I don't think it had an actual release before. I'm not quite sure of that, but, yeah. Well, okay. I'm, I, I mean, I actually quite liked her version. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of versions of One and One yeah. online now, and it's wonderful. This song is, it's a beautiful song. It's got great lyrics. Yeah, and it's timeless. It's timeless. Yeah. Yeah. So you already mentioned uh, the writers, uh, Billy Steinberg, Rick Nobles and uh, Marie-Claire Dubaldo. I hope I pronounced that right as well. So yeah, Billy Steinberg is a well-known songwriter uh, since he also wrote hits such as uh, Like a Virgin by Madonna, Eternal Flame from the Bangles, So Emotional from Whitney Houston and like more recently, uh, Give Your Heart a Break by uh, Demi Lovato. Um, did, did you ever manage to speak Billy Steinberg personally about uh, One and One? No, I was with him. Yeah, no, so, oh, so, yeah. Yeah, so what happened is, okay, so we did One and One and it got released. And then they asked, they invited, then they liked me. And then they invited <laughs> me after the, after the success of it to come and do Naked and Sacred that they'd written and, um, and to do some other songs. So I spent a good couple of months with them writing. Yeah, I spent a lot of time with them. Yeah. yeah. I, I believe there's also a cool story like, uh, that, that has uh, Madonna involved. Oh, <laughs> okay. So I went the first time to record with um, Rick Knowles and then I came home and there was a couple of months in between that I had to go back. And the second time I came back, he'd said to me that Madonna had come in with one and one in her hand and said, I want to make a record like this. And um, he'd said, OK. So they, they ended up writing Ray of Light and doing a lot of that album. So when I'd come back a couple of months later, she'd been in recording and he told me this story and he said she was in yesterday and her glass was there with her lipstick. So I just had to go, Madonna's lipstick for my glass. <laughs> <laughs> it's a story, yeah. 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 So I never met her, but yeah, yeah that was quite but, nice. But that, that's like a beautiful compliment. I know, and like, it was yeah. actually, she'd come in saying, I want to make a record like yeah. this, so yeah. Oh yeah, I think Great. that's one of the biggest compliments yeah. you, you, very you can get. Very much so, yeah, very much so. Yeah. So can, can I tell a bit more about the recording session, like the vocals, was it like easy or? Yes, I mean, I just remember them kind of, it was so easy. It's, it's, 
it's funny isn't it when a song has success like that and you hear oh it was written in 15 minutes and it was written in you know and there's people that spend years on one song and so it literally was within four or five hours we'd done it you yeah. know it was I, as soon as I heard the track as soon as I'd heard what Robert had done I knew what I had to fit on top yeah. you know and there was just a chemistry between us that afternoon yeah. that worked it's one of this magic yeah so yeah, One on One came out in 1996. Uh, do you remember hearing it on the radio for the first time? Gosh, I must have done. Yeah, no, not for the first... Oh gosh, when you asked me that question. Yeah, or one of the first I time. always remember hearing beat my first record, one of my first mm -hmm. records on there. And one of the things I remember with One on One is I came out of my flat and I walked in Holborn, I lived in London, and I remember walking out of my flat and walking onto High Holborn and there was a massive picture of One on One. And I just took a deep breath and was like, oh wow, <laughs> yeah, so you know, yeah, things yeah. like that. Like and another story, I remember waiting at Euston train station and I was at the crossing and all the traffic was there and this gorgeous man comes in his sports car with his hatchback down, pumping one on one and stops right in front of me. And I wanted to say, that's me, but you know, you don't. So, and I had quite a few of them little scenarios. Uh -huh. It was like, it's great, isn't it? Oh, you wow, know? Yeah, cool. it's great. Yeah, so One on One became a huge success and it became uh, became the second number one uh, on the US Billboard Dance Club charts uh, for Robert Miles. Did it? Yeah. Uh, Excellent, uh, I didn't uh, know uh, that. Uh, <laughs> according to Wikipedia. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, besides that, the single that peaked uh, uh, at number one in countries such as Belgium, Israel, Italy, Romania, Scotland and Lithuania. Uh, besides that, it was a top tenant in several other countries and dance charts all over the world. So were you surprised by the track or did you, already have a, did you already have a feeling like, yeah, this can be big? We had a feeling, like I say, I just remember that feeling. I just remember that feeling of looking at each other going, but everyone had that feeling around me, like my friends, my husband, everyone was like, this is going to go, yeah. you know, and, I, and obviously it's with Robert, he just had children, so yeah. we'd already had a platform mm -hmm. and it just, but also I think it was the song, it's when two things come together, the yeah. chemistry like that, sometimes you just know, yeah. you know, right time, right place. Yeah. The music industry is very, very fickle, you never know, mm -hmm. but I had a feeling. So yeah, I, I guess this was around the same time that you had to perform uh, the track live at several TV shows. Uh, so yeah, one of them was the legendary uh, show Top of the Pops. Can you tell a bit more about that one? Well, so obviously as a child growing up in the 70s and 80s top of the pops was the like i say didn't have x factor and all those other shows it was top of the pops was the only real industry i think we had the tube and a few other little channel four but they come much later it was just top of the pop so that was a dream for me to get on that and i got on it as one of the first dance acts with sasha uh, with, with, with the track i did with sasha b as one and i sung it live and i think it proved a lot that dance acts can sing live it was, uh, you know, it was mid nineties. So when one and one came, it was only never I was going to sing it live. And they weren't. Are you really going to sing it live? Well, yeah, I'm going to sing it live. I've sung the other ones live. This is what we're about. Mm -hmm. We can sing, yeah. you know. Um, so yeah, we were, of course we were going to do it live. Yeah. Were you nervous? Yes, of course. Yeah. It's good to have nerves, yeah. you know, excited nerves. But yeah, yeah of course, it's so a like, dream, you know. It's like. So, so the one you did with Sasha at BS One was that the first time you were on TV? For, for yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Exciting. Yeah. So yeah, what is your favourite memory when it comes to the release of One and One? Or one of the favourite memories? Being on top of the pops. Yeah. That's what I mean. It was yeah. just, you know, being in that. And also I remember being in Japan with Robert and we did um, a couple of magical gigs there. You know, there was a couple of times and also he still didn't speak English. Yeah. You know, so we had this like a lovely relationship in silence, but mm -hmm. we were there, yeah. you know, it was nice. Yeah. So yeah, Robert Miles sadly passed away in May 2017 at the age of 47. Do you remember the last time you spoke to him? So what happened is obviously, you know, you part your ways. He's going off doing that and I was going off doing mine early. I had a baby as well. Um, and um, so we didn't really see each other. And then I remember the internet come in and we've got the internet in our house. And it's like for a couple of years, I thought, let's see if I can find Robert. And um, I, I couldn't find him. And I remember going through someone to someone and then I got an email from him. And then what happened is every three years we talked to each other. It was so lovely. I'm so glad we had that, you know, because he didn't have children and then I did. And then he said he couldn't have children. Then he did have a child. And it was so lovely having that. And then I remember it stopping. And I just thought, God, I haven't heard from Robert for a couple of years. Yeah. And it's funny, actually, because um, one, of my, one of a good friend of mine now who's become a good friend because of this, who lives in my village, he told me that Robert wasn't well. 
just a guy that I didn't know in my mm -hmm. village realised I was Maria from One and One and called me over one morning and said, do you know Robert's not well? And I just remember going, no, I didn't know. And then, and then he said, he hasn't got long to live. It was a real shock and then within a couple of months he'd passed. Oh. So it was a massive blow, massive yeah. blow. Did you manage to speak to him before? No, no, no. Oh. no. Because I found out a couple of months before mm -hmm. he died and yeah. he was ill, you know, so... Yeah. So yeah, earlier this year you did travel to to Italy. Yay! Uh, to, so this is the good part. Yeah. yeah. Was it, uh, Fagagna, how do you pronounce it? Yes, Fagagna. 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 Yeah. So yeah, that's the place where Robert has spent a lot of his childhood, and it's also the place where his family still lives. So yeah, you managed to meet his family, and I believe there was a special tribute as well for him. So this has just been incredible because you know, I don't see Robert for years and years and years. Then I hear of his passing. And then I don't, again, for another five years. I managed to go to a memorial for him in Ibiza, like, as soon as he'd passed. And I remember meeting his mum. And then came home, then five years are on. And then his father has um, got in contact with me. His mum's unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago, but his father got in contact with me and said that what they're trying to do is open a square in memory of Robert for where he grew up. Um, and they've, they got it all sorted out, and that's what we did. So they'd asked me to come over to speak at a conference of how, you know, how I met Robert and how the song was recorded and to cut the ribbon. But they hadn't asked me to sing. So I was like, okay, that's fine. And so, and so I went and I had an interpreter and I remember standing up in front of the conference and talking. And then I had this moment of like, I'm here. I've got to sing it to you. So I remember speaking to the interpreter and said, do you want me to sing it? And they all went, oh my God, are you sure there's no music? And I, I said, just give me the mic, I'll just do it. And it, and I'll probably say, that performance of One and One with Robert's dad behind me, I mean, it gets a lump in my throat now, was probably the most heart, one of the heartfelt performances I've ever sung a song. Yeah. You know, singing One and One all of a sudden in that environment for Robert, for his child, for his mum that's passed and mm -hmm. his dad's there, you know, it was almost like coming back. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing yeah. that we've made connection. Yeah. So yeah, I guess everybody was really like yeah, yeah, surprised. Yeah, it was real yeah. emotional. Yeah. It was yeah. wonderful. Yeah, and, and recently you've been back because the square Yes, open because up. it's open again and then they opened another square. Yeah. Oh, two, he has so, two yeah, squares. So yeah, so it's, it's two squares. Oh, nice. so, yeah, he has two squares. So um, yeah, it's, it's lovely. Yeah. So I guess you will return to, to that place in the near future yes, as well? Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, it's just nice, a nice place to go back to. I will definitely be... I'm still so in contact with this. It's yeah. like I've got a new family in yeah. Italy. Ah, nice, nice. And, and the weather is good, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, besides uh, Robert Miles, you also did work with uh, Sasha, Tilt, uh, Ferry Corsten, Tanisha, Res Nitsen, Keo and Albert, Taste Experience, Bart Klaassen, and Four Strings, and a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're, we're, we are recording this interview in the studio of Res Nitsen, so I guess we can expect some new music from you guys soon? Yes, we can. I mean, I, <coughs> excuse me, I um, haven't been back because of lockdown, you know, so it's been like almost three years. So it's so good to be back and yeah, yeah doing some tunes with yeah. So how many did you finish already? No, we've done three today. Yeah. So yeah, let's see how many we can do tomorrow. Uh -huh. And uh, I go home tomorrow night. Yeah. So yeah. 2023, there will be a lots of new songs, yes. I guess. Yes, yes. Yeah. So are there still people you would love to work with? Oh God, yeah, there's loads of people I'd like to work with. I mean, oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, that's an unexpected because I haven't got it in my head. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, you may not know her, but I love some amazing singers, Daya Dover, Nessie Gomez. Um, there's some great producers I like, Porangi. Um, oh, it's, I like a sort of lot of medicine music that I'm listening mm -hmm. to, a lot of world music. Yeah. Um, but you know, my son DJs, and he's 23, and he's been DJing for three years, and he's brought back all this amazing house dance music for me in my house that is now, mm -hmm. you know. And, but they still love all the 90s yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, in his set, it's half of 90s mm -hmm. stuff. It's amazing. So I'm so pleased we're from the 90s. But I love what he's bringing into yeah. the house, all this new dance music production. Yeah. yeah. And he's, does, does he also like your music? He does. Okay, good, yeah, good. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, he has to, he has yeah. to. So yeah, um, I read on your Facebook page a story about like an unreleased uh, Maria Naylor album that finally gets a release. Yay! I know. So obviously with when I wrote with Rick Knowles and Billy Steinberg, I, um, I got signed solo to Deconstruction and they ploughed a lot of money into an album for me and I worked with the likes of Boy George, John Themis. There's lots of different writers I wrote there. And then what happened is um, 
Unfortunately, there was a couple of people that weren't well within the music, within the company. So I understand there was some stuff that went on there, but also I feel pregnant, and they were like, "We're not releasing your music while you're pregnant," which. At the time, I mean, now, if you said that, that's just not yeah. on. But you know, in the 90s, it was something that we just kind of accepted. Yeah, and it was, like, okay. I mean, I was angry, yeah. I was a bit understand, but you know, I'm having a baby. So I was like, right, okay, I get that. But then through the times, you know, especially over the last five or six years, and especially fans have asked for it. You know, there was a lot of press around it. It was nearly finished, it was almost, fi well, it was finished. It just wasn't mastered. Mm -hmm. It, there was promotion around it. So over the years, lots of people have asked for it. And if, I haven't heard it in ages because I had a cassette of it. Oh. You know, so we didn't know, that's all I had. And I don't even know where that is. So it was some of the things I hadn't heard. So it was a fight to get it back. And this wonderful man at Sony called Ollie Cameron has got it back for me. And um, yeah, it's going to be released hopefully before Christmas. Oh, nice. And it's been really interesting listening to it actually, because I... I wasn't sure, you know, I fought all this time to get it back and then I'm thinking, God, I hope I like it, but I do like it. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. So around Christmas, we can expect the album. Yes. The, what, what's the name of the album? She. Ah, nice. Um, so yeah, out, this is, I know this is always a difficult question. Out of all your own tracks, do you have a personal favourite one? BS1. Yeah. One, yeah the, the one with Sasha? Yeah. Yeah. I just, it, it, there's something about that song, you know, for me. And I don't know whether it's because the fans have made it like that for me. I mean, I ha I gig constantly, and it's always that one they want. It's yeah. not one and one, yeah. you know. It's it's always be as one, yeah. and it, it and, I, and that's still bubbling around mm -hmm. all the youngsters, and, and 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 it's such a personal one for me as well. So yeah, yeah. And I've even got it tattooed, and people I've even seen people with the lyrics tattooed yeah, on them as well. Yeah, 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 you know. So cool. yeah, be as yeah, one is definitely cool. my one. So yeah, what else can we expect from you in the near future? Well, um, obviously, wonderful music that I'm making with Resonitzen. Um, I'm doing sort of, I, I do a lot of sound therapy. So I do a lot of um, singing with singing bowls, with gongs. So I'm currently trying to make an album, a medicine album, where I'm look, working with a lot of people that are playing gongs yeah. and playing sort of, you know, lots of different sort of types of instruments and kind of doing a lot of vocal channeling and overtoning. So I'm really playing around with a lot of different stuff at the moment. It's really interesting. Yeah. So that's, that's also for 2023, hopefully? Pardon? That's also for 2023, yeah, hopefully? Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and the plan is to do that like under your own name? Yes, yeah. yeah. Right, I mean, I work a lot with um, a group of us called The Healing Collective, and we have gong players and drummers and people with crystal bowls, and we sing a lot of ancient Icaros and medicine songs from around the world. Um, and I, I want to get some of that recorded. Because it's, it's got high frequency and it's beautiful. It's, it's such a beautiful music, you know. All different parts from around the world mm -hmm. coming together. Yeah, how cool is that? Got, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Ah, cool. Yeah. Cool. And the last question, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, the story behind One and One, my interview with Maria Naylor. Maria, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.